In a recent video, we went over sending live data to the web with the ESP8266 Arduino Wi-Fi Shield. We published data to Dweet.io and displayed it graphically in real time using Freeboard.io. In this video, we'll go over the Arduino sketch we use for that. Let's start by summarizing the basic elements of the sketch. AT commands, such as this one, are used to communicate between the Arduino serial port or UART and the ESP8266 UART. The AT command set is described at a number of locations on the web, including this one. The sketch consists of four functions. The familiar setup and loop functions, a wait for ESP response function, and a start module function. The start module function will send each of these commands. The wait for ESP response function will be called after each command to wait for each of these responses. Once every second, the loop function will send this HTTP post to dweet.io. Let's go over these elements in the sketch. The wait for ESP response function takes two arguments. One is a timeout in milliseconds, and one is a search term. The function keeps reading characters from the serial port until the search term is found or the timeout period elapses. If no search term is provided as an argument, the default search term OK carriage return line feed is used. The while loop repeatedly checks to see if the serial port has received data from the ESP8266. If it has, it reads a character from the serial port, adds it to the incoming buffer, and increments the buffer index or receive character count. If this count exceeds the length of the search term, the last characters in the buffer are compared to the search term. If there's a match, found is set to true and the while loop is terminated with a break command. If there's not a match, the while loop continues until a match or timeout occurs. Following the loop, a null terminator is appended to the received data in the buffer. The received data is sent out through the debug software serial port and the found value is returned. Now let's go over the start module function. A couple of control variables are initialized. A debug serial message is printed through the software serial port. And the AT restart command is sent. This is used for both the ESP-01 and the ESP-03 modules. If you're sure to be using the ESP-01 module, a hardware reset can be used instead and is faster. The code waits for a response of EADY from the module. It's actually looking for ready with either a lowercase r or an uppercase r, depending on the software version in the module. If the EADY is received, a debug message indicating that it has been received is sent and module responding is set to true. If not, a debug message is sent indicating that the module is not responding, followed by a delay of one second. If the module hasn't responded, the loop is repeated. Once the module responds, these AT commands are sent. The GMR command is sent to display the software rev. The wait for ESP response waits up to one second for the default OK carriage return line feed response. A similar approach is used for the following two commands. The CW mode command puts the module in station mode as opposed to access point mode or a combination of the two. The SIP MUX equals zero command turns multiplexing off, which means there will be no multiple simultaneous TCP connections. The next section of code uses the CW join access point command to connect to your local Wi-Fi access point using the SSID and password defined earlier in the code. The wait for ESP response function will wait up to 9 seconds for a connection response. If not connected, the start module function will return false. 
Next, the SIP start command will be used to make a TCP connection to DWI.io on port 80. That's done with this block of code. The while loop will be executed up to five times to form and send the SIP start command. If the connection to DWI.io is established, the start module function will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. Now let's review the setup function. The Arduino's module hardware reset pin is set to the inactive low state and set to an output. The hardware serial port is started at 115,200 baud. The debug serial port is also started at the same baud rate. And a startup message is sent from the debug serial port. A while loop will then repeatedly attempt to start the module until the start module function succeeds. At this point, a connection to DWI.io is established. The loop function is now entered. The loop function uses the sip send command to delete two values. The first is called ramp. It's an integer. The second is called sig. And it's a floating point value, which is converted to text. Those values are actually updated at the end of the loop function, down here. In converting the sig value to text, we run into a problem because Arduino's implementation of sprintf doesn't support floating point values. The workaround is to use the double to string conversion function. 9 is the total number of characters in the converted representation. 3 is the number after the decimal point. We then create a string object from the result so that we can use the trim function to remove leading and trailing white space characters. Since the length of the elements of the HTTP post will change, we need to compute the total length of the post each time through the loop. We know that the post consists of 80 characters, plus the length of the thing name, plus the lengths of the current text representations of the ramp and sig values. So we augment the length by these amounts. For the thing name, we subtract 1 from the size of the result, since the result counts the null terminator. A few words about the print and print line commands. Serial.print just sends the text argument. Serial.println sends an additional carriage return and line feed. Knowing the length, we can now use the sip send command to initiate the post. First, we send the sip send at command with the length using print line instead of print for the length, so it's followed by a carriage return and line feed. We then wait for the greater than symbol in a space. In the unlikely event that they're not received, we close the connection to tweet.io and restart the module. Otherwise, once it's received, we know the module is ready to receive the post, so we construct and send it. We then wait for the remote server tweet.io to respond. Having viewed the server response previously using the debug serial port, we're expecting three right curly braces, a carriage return, a line feed, and OK when the post is successfully transferred. We wait for the response, then pause for one second before updating the ramp and sig values. The loop continues, sending the post once a second. Clicking on Tools, we select the serial port for the USB to UART cable. Debug messages can now be viewed through the software serial port using the serial monitor. Thanks for watching.